In problem number 19 of section 2.10, we're asked to, to find dy dx in two different ways. Uh, we're, we're given x minus sine of xy is equal to y. Now, the first way that we're going to do this is just standard implicit differentiation. Now, so we take the derivative of the left-hand side. So, say method one here. So take the derivative of the left-hand side, so with respect to x, so we have 1 minus uh, the derivative of sine of xy with respect to x is going to be cosine of xy. Now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside here. So derivative of x times dy dx. Uh, plus the derivative of x is just 1 times y. We use the product rule there. And all this will be equal to derivative of y with respect to x. Right, now move, we're going to move everything that has the dy to the x to the left-hand side of the equation, everything else to the right-hand side, which will let us factor out dy dx and solve for it. So we have negative cosine xy times x dy dx negative uh, cosine xy uh, this does not have a dy dx in it, so we'll leave it on put it on the right hand side but we do want to move the negative Remove the dy dx over to the left hand side. All right, so now on the right hand side, we have left the 1, so we'll have minus 1, and we'll have minus cosine xy plus y moved over to the left hand side, and that sign will become, a plus, will become plus. So we have plus cosine xy times y. Now we can factor out. Uh, factor out a dy dx on the left hand side, which will leave us with negative cosine xy minus 1 is equal to, let's see, equal to minus 1 plus cosine xy times y. Now we solve for dy dx. And we get that dy dx is equal to cosine of xy times y minus 1 over minus cosine xy. And I believe that I forgot to carry over an x here because back here when I multiplied by negative cosine xy, I was multiplying by x dy dx and factor out the dy dx, and that x should still be there. So divide by this quantity on the left hand side, we end up with negative cosine xy, x minus 1 in the denominator. Now, method 2. will be to first define uh, the function f of x, y. And we want this to be equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is just define this to be the same function as in, uh, as in the original problem, but I'm just going to move everything to, one hand, to the left-hand side. So that gives us f of x, y is equal to x minus y minus sine of x, y. Now, if you read uh, the introduction to this problem in the book, you'll see that uh, the book claims that an equivalent method for calculating dy dx is to look at minus what's called the partial derivative of f with respect to x. 
over the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Now, what I mean here when I write this um, funny looking d df over dx and partial of f with respect to y, uh, what I mean by that is we differentiate the problem as usual, only that we, the only uh, part, of the, part of the equation that we consider to be a variable is x uh, for partial of f with respect to x. Everything else we treat as a constant. So, for example, partial of f with respect to x will be equal to, well, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Now here, um, we're treating everything that's not, uh, not x just as a constant, so the derivative of any constant is 0. So now we take the derivative of minus sine of xy, well, the derivative of minus sine is going to be minus cosine. And now we need to apply the chain rule. But remember that we're just treating y as a constant right now. So the derivative of yx is going to be well, just y. And similarly, we'll compute the derivative or partial of f with respect to y. Now here, we're going to treat y as the variable and x as a constant. So the derivative of x with respect to y will just be 0. And the derivative of negative y with respect to y will be negative 1. And the derivative of negative sine of xy will be negative cosine xy. And applying the chain rule, we'll multiply by the derivative of xy with respect to y, or just x. All right, now let's go back and plug into this formula and see if it actually holds and see if it matches up to what we did in the first part, of the, or using the first method. So here we have dy dx um, equals minus, now the partial of f with respect to x will be 1 minus cosine of xy times y over negative 1, negative cosine of xy times x. Or we can simplify this just by writing 1 minus the cosine of xy times y over 1 plus cosine of xy times x. Now if we go back to uh, what we computed earlier, we see that this does indeed hold.